Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be covering just a simple topic of dividend yield on cost. All right. It's just nice and easy, right? That's what they always say. So dividend yield on cost is the annual dividend paid by security divided by the original cost basis of the investment. So not the current price of the investment. Important difference, all right? It's different from the annual dividend yield, which measures the annual dividend against the current price of security. So the dividend yield would matter for what you're going to buy in the present. So yield on cost reflects what you have previously made investments in as far as uh, for dividend c concerns. So since more securities rise in value over time, the yield on cost is often but not necessarily higher than the current dividend yield. Um, you would hope that your yield on cost rises over time. That's kind of the whole point of what we're doing with dividend growth investing. So just briefly cover some terms. Dividend yield shows you how much dividend income every dollar invested at the current stock price will produce, whereas yield on cost shows the rate of dividend income earned based on the original cost basis that you paid. Um, dividend yield fluctuates daily because it's based on the current price of the stock uh, rather than an investor's cost basis in the stock. Um, so dividend yield can fluctuate more than yield on cost because you you bought the stock for a certain amount of money and that's it unless you buy more. Um, share prices do not impact yield on cost. Yield on cost only changes if a company raises or lowers its dividend or an investor buys or sells, which affects the uh, cost per share of the investment. Okay. So I'm going to do a brief, uh, I'm just gonna do one comparison. I know you could take this a lot of different ways. So we're going to look at Verizon, I'm going to go back 19 years. Because um, that's kind of what my model was already set up for. So we're going to go back to um, like mid July of 2004. So boy, look at that, how it hasn't done anything. Freaking wild. So we're going to use that. And then we're going to compare this to McDonald's. Same thing. We're going to go to 2004, sometime in July. Okay, 27. So this is what we're going to look at. Now, Seeking Alpha, you can go look at the, um, you can go dividend history and you will see uh, different statistics. You can click this growth tab and it'll show you specifically the yield at the end of each year and then annual payout growth over time. So if we look at, um, <clears throat> so before we start, you can see before I, I throw it in my, my uh, model, if you look at, this is Verizon. So you're looking at, look, they started out kind of strong in the beginning, right? They had some good five or 6% dividend growth years, but you know, recent history, it's been 2% per year, basically for the last like seven, eight years, two, three percent. Compare that McDonald's, okay? Look at some of the big chunky annual payout growths in their dividend that they've had. Granted, a lot of them have been in the past, not the near term, but you can see even in the even in the last 10 years, um, they've been averaging, uh, I think seven, 8% annual growth in the dividend the last 10 years, while Verizon's could maybe averaging two, 3%. So this sizable difference, all right? So if we look, so let's assume you bought one share of each in 2000, July of 2004. Okay. We're not going to do reinvestment because um, that messes, that muddies the water. And the whole idea of dividend growth investing is you don't have to reinvest the dividend to see the dividend keep growing. Um, if, if technically if the dividend didn't grow, then yes, the only way to grow your dividend payments would be to constantly re, you know, uh, add more shares. So. If we look at, let's look at Verizon first. Okay. So if we go back, it started out pretty good. You have a higher yield. Uh, McDonald's was say, um, you know, 2% while Verizon was double that by, by my rough calculations uh, from that year. So then I added the actual uh, growth rates from Seeking Alpha and you can see this is the yield on cost. Cause so the, the, the share price did not change. Okay. So back then it was 3165. So I just carried forward the share price. So this is while the dividend is growing, that is yield on cost. So you can see basically that one share that you bought in 2004 would, 
produce, um, you know, up to today, you're looking at for Verizon, you know, 9%. So eh, not bad. You can see how the trajectory of it went. So now if we go to McDonald's with the growth that they had, you started at 2% and you got all the way up to a yield on cost of 21% in today's dollars. Um, now this, we'll get into the pros and cons of yield on cost or negatives, positives, I guess. So this doesn't consider obviously like uh, the total return or uh, like what the, the stock actually did during this time. This is just strictly looking at the dividend paid the growth of the dividend compared to what you paid for that uh, that income, basically. So you can see by by a yield on cost metric, McDonald's has vastly outperformed Verizon um, on this metric, almost over double, even though Verizon started with a much higher yield in the first place. It, this shows you the power of, of a dividend, a good dividend growth company um, over time. So you can see that it, it quickly caught up um, to the yield of Verizon. So basically, basically here, by so if you bought that share, you know, five years later, four or five years later, the yield on cost of McDonald that McDonald's share caught up to Verizon. Um, so this is the one point of like what yield on cost basically represents. It shows you, it shows you the power of dividend growth companies um, in practice. Looking at the yield on cost metrics. So. Um, but it's all about total return, I guess, right? Is that what we say? So you can see, um, unsurprising to anyone, uh, McDonald's shares also outperform Verizon, not just the dividend. So you can see the difference here. Now, does that mean the total return will always, uh, you know, something with a higher yield on cost will always outperform something with lower yield on cost? I mean, I would doubt that, maybe, but that's not why we're here today. Um, so I guess you'd... Um, I, I don't know if you let's we'll say positive negatives. I don't know how else to put it. So positives of yield on cost as a metric, right? Because there's lots of metrics in investing. So this is another metric. Um, so it can be used to get to uh, gauge your past stocks purchase performance and how productive an existing an existing investment has been for you. So you could say uh, if you bought a share of McDonald's in 2004, it has been a more productive income investment for you compared to Verizon based on yield on cost. It's produced a better percentage return um, in the dividend. Um, another positive yield on cost, uh, you're tracking yield on cost that could be useful to gauge a uh, company's dividend growth over long periods of time. So this shows you, like I said, um, basically why dividend growth investing is the way to go if you're going to be a dividend investor. Um, if you don't have any growth in the dividend, then basically, why wouldn't you just go buy like a preferred share? So, I mean, if you're not getting any growth in a dividend of a public traded company, because I would argue for Verizon, I, I would argue if, if you ask me if I want, should buy Verizon, I would say, I think you should just go buy a preferred share of a company that's doing really well. They'll give you higher yield and you don't have any downside risk. The, the dividend won't go away. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, so that, that's just my take on it. Um, the other thing, I mean, you know, it can help you stay motivated as a dividend growth investor, I think, because there might be times when the market's not doing well and you have this metric that shows you, the, um, you know, so not only can you track um, the increasing dividend amount, the payments that you're getting, but you can also track like the actual yield of the money that you've put in into your shares. Um, so this can keep you in the game for long periods of time. So negatives of yield on cost as a metric, um, it's backwards looking um, and it doesn't reflect anything related to the future prospects of the company or what they're going to do in, in the present, really. Um, it's just looking at past performance of investments, basically. Uh, so it doesn't also, like I said, it doesn't reflect the total return of an investment. It just tracks the return of the dividend and grow the growing dividend over time. So it's not reflecting the share price appreciation that you may or may not have. Um, the other negative, this is the one, this metric does not help you analyze a new investment or help you with decision-making in the present. This, this is not a metric you can use to evaluate where to allocate your capital in the present, or it won't, and it's not really something that allow you to screen for new investments um, that I'm aware of. So it's, 
yield on cost is kind of just a thought experiment for you to look at your investments and it allows you to gauge how your investments have done over time in a different way than just looking at total return. So this allows you to look at the performance of the dividend portion of your investments from the past. So that that's my opinion on it. Um, I never, I, it's not something I'm necessarily that big on. I, I'm more of tracked over time, just the, the dollar amount actually I've gotten over time in my investments. Um, so it is what it is, but so there's the total return. If you want a more detailed video on this um, from the from the OG, um, he he's much better at creating videos than I am, but he's retired, so he can do this all day. But he did a video on this Gen X dividend investor, dividend yield on cost, why some love it or some don't. So that's a 30 minute discussion on yield on cost. Um, there's other companies you can look at, but it just shows you. So like, you know, I think it's good to understand if you're going to be a dividend investor that I think like I've tried to say, like, you don't, don't just be chasing the present yield of a company, the present yield of the company. If you're looking at something for 20 year investment, it's kind of irrelevant. I, I just like the, the current yield is not the, the, what you should be spending your time looking at. You're still trying to find companies that are going to do better and grow over time. Um, just like a, any other type of investor. So like, don't be fixated. This, this, what the yield on cost shows you in this example is you don't need to be so fixated on the current day yield. Um, it, you can have a company with really great growth prospects and maybe the yield today is only basically the S&P 500's yield. So you might throw it aside. So, well, that's not a dividend investment, but if you pick the right company that has a good growth plan, good management, um, good cash flows and, or, you know, increasing market, or they're taking share from other companies. I mean, very quickly that yield, if they're, if they're hitting some of the explosive dividend growth that McDonald's had in the early days, and then they continued that dividend growth rate that was higher than Verizon in this example, um, very quickly, it became a better dividend investment. So this is what I would tell like a new investor. Um, if you're, if you're new to dividend investing, don't be so fixated on yield. And I, it's like a, at first it's a drug because you're getting more income right away. So you think you're doing really well. Maybe you only started with 10,000. If you buy like Verizon, AT&T and Chevron, like, okay, your dividend income. No, okay. It's not, you know, you're motivated. It's, it's a lot, it's a good amount of money, but you're shortchanging the future for just the drug of those, the yield today. And this, Looking at yield and costs would show you that um, you're thinking about the wrong thing if you think about yield. To be successful in dividend investing, you need to think about the growth prospects of a company. It, you're not changing that dynamic from other types of investing. Okay, so um, I'll give you a good one that I think Carrier is one I'm excited about today. Low yield. You can go look at the yield of Carrier. Um, and I think that's another potential McDonald's type company that could have a run like this. Um, I'm not spending my time looking at companies like Verizon. Um, they're just not interesting as a dividend investment. I'd rather just go buy like, um, SCHD than Verizon. So it's just something to think about. Um, so I encourage you to look for the growing dividend companies that you can sit on and for 20 years and you can get that yield on cost appreciation. Um, so I challenge you to find those, um, in your dividend journey, um, so leave me a comment. Uh, tell me my math is wrong. Whatever. <laughs> it's late. I'm tired. But uh, if you have any questions about this, let me know. I'm going to do a... I don't know what the topic of the Thursday live stream is yet. I'm still working on it. Um, if I can't, hopefully there's some stuff to talk about. It's kind of rough around 4th of July. There's just not a lot to talk about. Um, next video will be the next book review. So I'm making my notes. Um, and I, this will be the next book review. Cause then I'll get into three dividend growth book, dividend investing books to read. Then, so I already did Peter Lynch and then there'll be a fifth book, which will be like a, uh, how to analyze financial statements. Um, that'll probably be, I don't know, maybe six books total in the book series. Um, you don't need to read 20 books, but that's it for now. Um, thanks for listening and I'll talk to you later.